everybody crafting journey here that journey chick on instagram i'm doing the show from my bed yes <sighs> yesterday doing the show from the craft room really took the wind out of my sails um i'm i'm able to walk on the knee now but i'm using the cane you know because i don't want to like accidentally lose my balance or have a fall god forbid so um it just, it was just, you know, I went back and forth with the computers and the the research that I needed and getting things set up. And it was, it's easier just for now. And please forgive me. It's just to do the show here in my bedroom where I have no curtains on, the, on this, on this, bl I have blinds, but no curtains and blinds that the cats have gotten to. But what's in my hand? A crochet hook. So let me show you what I was working on yesterday. Um, uh, bag a day crochet at crystal, uh, and it's B A G underscore O underscore day, bag o day crochet. And the woman's name is Crystal. She's really, I have learned so much from her. Her tutorials are fantastic, her crochet tutorials. So she's doing a crochet along um, where she's using Sesame Street characters, Count Dracula, to make a blanket. So I did one square um, a, a month or so back. Um, she's already up to episode seven. Uh, there's going to be nine squares, and then we're going to put them all together. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do while I'm recovering is to work on this uh, square. It's going to be a baby blanket, but uh, I have no babies coming along in the family whatsoever. But I said, you know, I like the blanket, and I want to do it. So yes, last night I worked on the count. Dracula square. Yep. So what I've got left is just the border because right now it's kind of like folding in on itself, um, but it won't once I get that border done. I'm doing like a single crochet border up here um, and then that'll complete the square. And then later on, um, I'm going to hot glue this to the middle of the square. So each blanket, each blanket square, there'll be nine squares, will have a different character hot glued into the middle of the square. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, and we are on Verdict Watch in the fentanyl crime case, fentanyl murder case, the trial of Dr. William Husel. We are on Verdict Watch in that case. Uh, I've got that up on my computer over here. <laughs> I've got so much crap in this bedroom right now. My God. Um, and then yesterday, my sister sees me carrying this bag of yarn. She's like, what are you up to now? And I was carrying the bag of these characters so I could work on the on this. So, uh, <laughs> and each little character um, comes with its yarn. And this yarn is from, if you're interested, um, you can head over to Crystal's channel. Each Tuesday, she does an episode where she does a different square. Um, this is the Sef Sesame Street Lion Brand. Doo, doo, doo. One Hat Wonder. So, uh, this is Count Dracula. I have all the different characters, so I'm going to do each character. Um, today, I want to, uh, I'm going to finish this border, and then I'm going to do some cross stitch today. Some more cross stitch. Um, I discovered, I'm working on... We'll talk about it more tomorrow, but I've got a lot to say about some cross-stitch stuff. Mm -hmm. Me, <laughs> who always has a lot to say. So uh, I got a beautiful gift in the mail from Narena. Look at this. It says, Knee Replacement Warrior. That has the lady there. And then it says, down here it says, It's not for the weak. How fun is that? And it's a pink shirt. She also sent me, <laughs> this is so funny. I don't know if you read, shoe horns. Shoe horns. So when I stand up, I can put my shoes on without struggling. You know, you get your finger down there and you're struggling to get the your heel in and you're like, oh, my foot's too fat. And you know, so now I got, <laughs> I, got I can add shoe horns to the pile that is growing over here. Yep. So, gosh, yesterday after 
I did uh, find, you know, after I got the, the filming done and the editing and, and um, you know, I was sitting in bed doing the editing and everything, but uh, man, I was exhausted. So I took a nap and it, it was, it felt really good. It felt great. So let's talk about the uh, trial of William Houston. We are in verdict brought for that. Uh, it, the jury has had it now uh, since yesterday morning. They did have at least one question that I saw yesterday. Um, the question was they wanted to, uh, they were going through the reports of the various experts. And one of the experts had mentioned that he relied on some of the articles and they wanted to know where were these articles because it says that the articles would be attached to his report. Well, they deliberately did not send the articles back um, because there was a lot of huge argument about, you know, whether they were really admissible as evidence. And these attorneys can't agree whether the sky is blue. So... And they literally argued over the answer to this question for 30 minutes, like how they were going to reframe the response to this question. The judge is like, let's just tell them, no, they're not. <laughs> no, we did not include any articles as attachments to the report. And they're like, but we have to tell them why. And, you know, oh, my God. And then the why got to be an argument. And finally, they just sent back a note saying that, uh, no, the attachments were not included with the report um, as evidence. So, interesting. <laughs> so, clearly, they are going through everything with a fine-tooth comb. This jury is taking this super serious, um, as they should. So... Now, the next case that I am covering, and there is another case going on, Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp. It's a civil case for defamation, and um, I, I'm not following it. It's, it's a very, you know, it's in the media, you'll hear about it, but it's just not one that interests me, and um, if it's something you would, that you think interests you and you would like me to recap it for you, I can put a count here, so... Oh, 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 two trials. Ha, ha, ha. No. <laughs> um, I will tell you that watching one trial is, is, is still, is, you think, oh, well, you're just sitting there in the bed. How hard could it be? Well, it's uh, between napping <laughs> and, you know, about nine o'clock at night, I like to kind of watch my own shows. I've been watching Big Brother Australia. Oh my God, so interesting. Anyway, but let me know if if, if you want me to uh, take a peek in on this Amber Heard Johnny Depp thing and let you know what's going on with that. I will tell you though that uh, Lori Day, Lori Day, Chad Day, Daybell, Lori Daybell. <laughs> Um, she is uh, she is charged with the murder of her children, uh, amongst other things. She and her uh, husband took off. They had just been married. They took off on a honeymoon, and people kept up saying, "Where are the kids? Where are the kids?" Her son and daughter. Nobody had seen them, and they finally found them there in the backyard. And there was this whole um, religious cultist kind of background to that case. So that uh, is going to trial in February. And recently, the um, Chad Daybell's attorneys had moved the court to sever the trials to hold them separately um, from Lori's trial. Uh, but because they had declared Lori incompetent to stand trial, and no one was giving them any clues as to how long that would be before she was declared competent. Because you can't try somebody that's not competent to stand trial. And that doesn't mean that they're insane. It just means they can't, they don't know what's happening around them. They can't assist in their own defense. 
um, you just can't try somebody that's like that. Uh, now, whether she's insane, that's a whole different question. You know, the whole different set of questions for a different set of experts. But uh, so because they weren't getting any kind of clue as to how long she would be unable to or incompetent to stand trial, they wanted to sever the trials. Well, the judge uh, heard arguments on that. I think I even covered it on the channel and said it came back and he said, no, um, we're not going to try it separately. And one of the main reasons is because all of the evidence is the same. Um, it, it's in the interest of judicial economy to try these together. You don't need to have two separate trials, two separate expenses for the state that's trying them, um, all, you know, where they'd have to hear all of this same evidence again, which basically gives the state a second bite at the apple. Um, no, the judge says, no, we're, we're not going to do that. And it's scheduled for February of 2023, and hopefully by then she will be declared competent to stand trial. So, of course, the other day, Monday, um, she was found competent to stand trial. So she is now able to understand uh, what the process is, and she will uh, she's able to uh, assist in her defense. I feel like I'm slipping. I'm slipping on the pillows. <laughs> anyway, so I'm looking forward to that trial. That's going to be an interesting trial. And it's very similar to the one that I'm covering now, I think. Um, and that is, I've, I've nicknamed it the Apocalypse murder trials. Um, so I was able to listen to some of it yesterday. The medical examiner came on and um, had some very interesting things to say. Because uh, all of the bodies were pretty heavily decomposed, she said they had at least been in that apartment for two weeks. So uh, they were heavily decomposed, so she was not able to determine uh, if there was any injuries that would be associated with suffocation. Um, so we, they weren't able to tell that, which I thought was interesting. So the only reason we know that would be through his confession. So I have not listened to his confession yet, so I will do that. Um, oh, I just did a double crochet. That's supposed to be a single crochet. My fault. Um, oops. I hope I didn't do that over here. Let's look. Oh, did I? No, I did not. Okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, so, where was I? Brain fart. Let me sit up again. Oh my goodness. Falling over here. I get so comfortable crocheting that I fall over. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm asleep. So the um, next, oh, the medical examiner. Yeah, so not able to tell whether there was suffocation, strangulation, asphyxiation, which she said are all different things, but she, the injuries that would be associated with them, you know, were long gone because of um, decomposition. And we're talking about Florida. This is, it, it is December when this occurred, but in Florida, it's still pretty warm, especially in an apartment where the power's not on and they're wrapped in blankets. So the boys and the mother had been stabbed with, and there was a knife found. They were able to collect DNA from the knife and we did hear from a DNA expert that said that the DNA on the knife um, was, they found the mom's DNA and the, ch the father's DNA. So, and Anthony's story is that she killed herself, that the wife killed herself. Um, and uh, the knife sort of supports that story that, you know, the, the predominant source of DNA on the knife was the wife's, uh, and although the father's was on there as well, on the knife handle. So, who knows? But back to the medical examiner, she uh, said that the knife wounds uh, on 
on the victims were very clean. And what that means is there was no signs of internal bleeding or hemorrhage or anything like that that you would expect from a knife wound unless it was delivered after they are already dead and there's no circulation of the blood. So her conclusion was that these knife wounds were post-mortem. In other words, these people were already dead when uh, they were stabbed. Interesting. So then we have Uh, the tissue was sent out because, you know, all that Benadryl was found all over the house, the empty Benadryl bottles and boxes. So they sent the, they weren't able to send any blood because there was no blood. So they sent brain tissue and liver tissue to this special laboratory um, that's able to analyze it for blood and uh, see and run toxicology tests on them. And all of the victims, uh, did have heavy amounts of diphenhydramine, which we know is Benadryl, in their system um, at the time of death. So the conclusion of the medical examiner was that the cause of death was an, uh, unspecified, and uh, but due in part to uh, diphenhydramine toxicity. Um, and it was pointed out that, you know, diphenhydramine is a perfectly safe drug. Um, people don't usually overdose on that. It's not usually your drug of choice to overdose, but you can overdose on diphenhydramine. Um, it causes respiratory suppression, um, and you will just uh, die. Uh, but it has to be in pretty heavy amounts, which it appears uh, was the case here. So, like I said, she was not able to, um, the evidence did not support a causation of asphyxiation or suffocation, um, that she just couldn't rule that in or out as a cause of death. The other interesting thing about the autopsy was that she also could not rule out that the wife stabbed herself. Uh, because of the angle of the knife wounds, she had two knife wounds on her abdomen. They were about an inch apart. And the direction of the, the wound, um, it could have been done by the wife. The wife could have stabbed herself. Um, given the direction of the, the wound. So, we don't know. Did she stab herself? or did, what? You know, was this a suicide pact? I don't know. Interesting, huh? What do you think? One victim. Ha, ha, ha. I know. That's not funny. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> so, let me know if you want me to cover Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. It's a little dispute. Um, if, if, you, if you do, I will. Um, if not, we'll, we'll, we'll just continue with the... Apocalypse Murders. Today I want to listen to the, the uh, his interview, his police interview, where he confesses, which uh, is, is a few hours long. So uh, that's my goal today, is to listen to that and kind of outline what he said um, in his confession and kind of give you a flavor of his demeanor while he was confessing, you know, because I'm sure that's going to be a big issue. You know, was he coherent? Uh, did he really know what he was talking about? You know, we'll see. So guys, that's, you know, a short show for today. Um, I do, again, apologize. I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm a warrior. A knee replacement warrior. Okay, so this is done. Yep, just have to finish the, um, and I'm almost there. I'm almost done finishing the uh, out outline thing and then we'll put the count here that'll be square number two and tomorrow i'll see you with some cross stitch love you all bye